we give and have voluntary contributions because we love our Lord Jesus. And notice what he stated here, John chapter 14 and verse 23. In answer, Jesus said to him, If anyone loves me, he will observe my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. So appreciate how Jesus put it, if. So it's a responsibility that falls on us individually. But if we say we love Jesus, and we're not like uh, Christendom with this proclamation of their love for Jesus, they, don't, they really don't even know the real Jesus, frankly, until you get an accurate knowledge of the truth. But if we're in the truth, we're dedicated, baptized servants of him, if we really love him, we're going to observe his word. Now, that means not just carrying out the kingdom, putting our time and energy into it. It also means money. See, we are willing to donate money to support the worldwide work. This talk just gets more and more manipulative the longer it goes on. I mean, what's he talking about now? If you want to be loved, give us your cash. Well, hang on a minute. You were reading 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7, which says that no one should be giving under compulsion, under compulsion, and now you're digging out a verse from John chapter 14, which, by the way, says nothing at all about money. Jesus doesn't say anything about money here. But the argument Tony's making is, if you want Jesus to love you, you'd better give me, <laughs> on his behalf, your money. Divert your funds, or as much money as you can, to the organization I'm conveniently a spokesperson for and living quite well off. And hey, guess what? As a reward, you get to be loved by Jesus. That's how he's using John 14 verse 23. If anyone loves me, he will observe my word and my father will love him. Again, I don't think this verse has anything to do with money but used in the way Tony Morris is using it, given the application that Tony Morris is giving this verse, it's incredibly narcissistic to say to someone, do as I say, or I'm going to stop loving you. Uh, we're not ashamed to admit that this takes money to have these things operate, branches and uh, supporting all of the preaching work, the kingdom work, all these other initiatives that we've had in recent years, it takes money. Uh, you can't go to people that you buy things from and say, well, look, this is a nonprofit organization, They're trying to shame them, and well, can you give it to No, they want their money uh, to be paid for the various things that we have to use to accomplish Jehovah's work. So something to keep in mind, those three things there, uh, our love for Jehovah, we want to do what's pleasing to him. Uh, we count our blessings from Jehovah. Uh, then we have our love for Christ Jesus, see? and we want to do whatever we can. So how you do it with the financial contributions, that's a personal decision, and Jehovah dignifies us with that. We never want to be shaming somebody that we think they should be doing thus and so. That's a personal matter. But Keep in mind, sometimes if you are poor, remember the widow. So she didn't come there to the uh, temple empty-handed. She didn't have much, but Jehovah loved her. Jesus loved her for giving what she had. So even when we're poor, we're expected to give uh, monetarily. And it's because we love Jehovah, love Jesus, and we appreciate all the blessings we've received during the year and uh, are grateful. I'm not so annoyed at the thought of most Jehovah's Witnesses in well-off countries watching this talk and feeling pressured to give their money. I'm really more annoyed, enraged even, at the thought of, again, Jehovah's Witnesses in poorer countries where they really are living hand-to-mouth and they have nothing already. The thought of Jehovah's Witnesses in this situation, at this level of desperation, 
watching this JW broadcasting episode, perhaps at their local Kingdom Hall or at the home of another witness on their TV, and feeling as though they owe the organisation their money, even though they really need to be keeping hold of it and using it for themselves. That's what really enrages me about this talk. Most of the rest of it, I can kind of shrug off and in fact take some delight in. Because let's face it, viewers, this talk, we can add this to the long list of evidence that this organisation is hemorrhaging money and is struggling financially. I'm sorry, the organisation I grew up in would have nothing to do with this sort of rhetoric. This is not the religion that I grew up in. We always held to the Charles Taze Russell mantra that there would never be any begging and that if people gave money, it would always be voluntary. Well, how on earth can you say this isn't begging when it's repeated, when it's in talk after talk, video after video, by the way, you have this privilege of giving money and even in this video, going to the degree of saying everyone should give, there are no excuses. Even the poorest should be giving money. This is just a world away from the organisation I grew up in. And though I am enraged at the thought of the poorest Jehovah's Witnesses being put in an even worse position than they already are, by listening to what this bloated, slurring buffoon is saying, I do at least draw comfort from the fact that there's evidence here, isn't there, that this organisation is genuinely struggling and is genuinely in panic mode due to there not being enough cash. How on earth could you justify them putting out this sort of material if they weren't completely desperate. 